Yes, okay, now is my favorite slide. Why do you think that is? Guess what? We get to talk about cell injury, okay, hypoxia, all right, and necrosis all on a molecular level. What? I know, it. awesome, right? Isn't that sweet? I'm excited. <laughs> and I swear I'm not a nerd either. All right, so um, we're going to start off by asking the question, why does a cell even need oxygen at all? What's the point of oxygen? So here's a cell membrane here. And I'm going to ask you, what ion is most prevalent on the outside of the cell? Sodium. What about on the inside? Potassium. And it's actually very important for a cell to maintain this equilibrium. And we'll see why in a little bit. But just trust me, it's important. Um, so what pump then maintains this equilibrium? Hmm. I wonder if it's the, yep, sodium-potassium pump. Wow. Whoever named that is a genius. Okay, so this pump actually exchanges how many sodiums? Three sodiums from the inside for two potassiums. And it requires energy in the form of ATP, as does almost everything that requires energy in the cell. We saw it earlier with apoptosis, and you'll see it in just about every other reaction within the cell. Okay, so ATP is required. Now, where do we get ATP from? So to answer that, we have to talk about your favorite subject of all, biochemistry. I know, I know, uh, you, you're probably shutting your eyes already and snoring, but no, biochemistry is fun, and I'll, I'll show you why. I promise it's going to be fun. Once we tie all this stuff together, you're going to be so happy that we did. Okay, so... Here's a little biochemistry snapshot, and we're going to actually have to talk about, yeah, the electron transport chain. You thought you were done with this. You thought you put it away back in first year med school. Nope, it's back. <laughs> and back with a vengeance. So, the electron transport chain transports electrons. Where do these electrons come from? They actually come from NADH. Where does NADH get its electrons? Well, from glycolysis and the TCA, or Krebs cycle. Remember all those dehydrogenase enzymes? Yeah, those all make NADHs. All right, so NADH deposits its electrons onto the electron transport chain, and when it does that, it actually converts itself into NAD+, because it gets oxidized. So electrons jump from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4, and then to another substance, that we'll mention in a little bit, but each of these complexes is progressively more electronegative and more possessive of electrons until the final electron acceptor, what is that? Oxygen! That's why we need oxygen. Oxygen takes these electrons, complexes with them, and turns into water. All right, so what's, what's the big deal with the electron transport chain? Why do we need electrons to jump around? So the reason actually is that each time an electron jumps from one complex to another, it pumps out a proton into the intermembranous space of the mitochondria. So these protons go into the intermembranous space, and this actually sets up an electrochemical gradient because of all these protons in this space. These protons really would like to flow down their gradient. And if they do, this will actually provide enough potential energy, the drop in potential energy will actually be enough to phosphorylate something. So they flow through only one little gap. Only one little gap allows the protons to flow, and that is ATP synthase. And each time a proton flows down its electrochemical gradient, it actually phosphorylates an ADP molecule into ATP. Woohoo! So that's good news. That's how we make ATP, and that's why we need oxygen. So ATP phosphorylates the pump. Sodium is pumped out of the cell, and then potassium is shunted inwards. Very cool, right? Very awesome animations, too, if I might add. All right, so now let's talk about what happens when we don't have oxygen. Uh-oh. So this is called hypoxia, all right, and here we have ATP. So 
why won't we have ATP anymore? Well, let's again bring up this biochemistry snapshot to explain why. So no oxygen. Remember, there's nothing to accept electrons now. Oh no. So if, if these electrons that were from NADH can no longer flow through the complexes and be accepted by oxygen, then there will be stasis of electrons. No flow will mean no pumping of protons into the intermembranous space and thus no flowing of, of protons down their gradient and phosphorylation of ADP to create ATP. Wow, everything finally comes together. Do you see how beautiful it is? I think it is. But that is why we need oxygen to accept electrons. Otherwise, no ATP. All right, so now let's talk about the downstream effects of this. So, there's no ATP, then there's nothing to phosphorylate this pump. If this pump isn't phosphorylated, sodium can't leave the cell. If sodium can't leave the cell, what always follows sodium? Here is why we see that this pump is so important. What follows sodium? Water.